Hare Krishna. So we are going to hold the initiation ceremony here today. In ISKCON we have uh, three types of initiation. First, second and sannas. First initiation is when one gets the Harinam. Actually, Harinam doesn't require initiation. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave the Harinam and he gave the liberty or he gave the approval for everyone to chant the Holy Name. That is Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mercy. But still, in ISKCON, we have Srila Prabhupada instituted the Harinam initiation also. In ISKCON, we conduct Harinam, which is con- which is considered to be the first initiation. Why did Prabhupada do that? <clears throat> the reason is that Diksha has two aspects. One is receiving the mantra. The mantras are in the Vedic time. In previously, the mantras were kept as a secret. Because the mantras are very powerful things. And just as very powerful things are kept in a very secured way so that no unqualified people can get it. So similarly the mantras were kept as a secret. And the guru is to give the mantra only in the ears so that nobody could hear that. So that is how the mantras were kept as a secret. Only through the process of initiation, (coughs) the guru used to give the mantra to the shishya. But Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave the mantra to everybody. Diksha Purascharja Vidhi Apekkhana Kari Achan Jubhas Parshe Achandale Shavari Uddhari. It has been mentioned that this Hare Krishna Mahamantra does not depend upon Diksha or Purascharja or process of purification. Just by coming in contact with the tongue, this mantra delivers even a chandal. Chandal is the, the lowest class of man. Achandale shabari uddhari. Everybody, uh, even up to a chandal, can get delivered by chanting the Maha Mantra. But Diksha has another aspect. That other aspect of Diksha is Diksha kale shishya kare atma samarpan. At the time of initiation or diksha, the disciple surrenders, atma samarpan, offers himself. And sheikale krishna tare kore atma samo. And at that time, Krishna accepts him. So that is why diksha is necessary, in, even for first initiation. That's why Prabhupada introduced this process of surrender. So one gets the opportunity to belong to Krishna through the via medium of the spiritual master. And what is the qualification of a spiritual master? Uh, There are various qualifications a spiritual master should have. But the most important consideration is that he knows Krishna. Jai Krishna Tattva Bitta Shai Guru Hai. Guru must know Krishna. Therefore, Guru acts as a via 
medium to Krishna. Uh, Guru acts as a transparent via medium. Uh, the via medium, transparent, the meaning transparent means nothing stops, the light doesn't stop. Uh, in physics you must have studied three types of objects, transparent, translucent and opaque. Transparent, all the light goes through. Translucent, some lights go through, some don't. And opaque, no light goes through. <laughs> so Guru has to be transparent. Uh, that means uh, he is accepting the disciple and just offers him to Krishna. That is the qualification, transparent via medium. He should accept disciples on behalf of Krishna. Of course, in ISKCON, we have another consideration uh, that is, uh, we are acting as a via medium to Srila Prabhupada. In ISKCON, Srila Prabhupada is the Acharya. Srila uh, Prabhupada is the founder Acharya. No one will contest that Srila Prabhupada is the founder. Uh, everybody knows that Srila Prabhupada is the founder of ISKCON. But Srila Prabhupada also is the Acharya of ISKCON. Acharya means Srila Prabhupada is the guru of everyone in ISKCON. And that will be for all time. Srila Prabhupada's position will always remain in ISKCON as a founder Acharya. And there will be many gurus who will give initiation, but uh, they will act as a via medium to Srila Prabhupada. Via medium means he offers the disciples uh, and then from the Guru or the Guru Parampara whatever comes he gives it to the disciples. Whatever he gets from the disciples he gives to the uh, to whom he is representing and whatever he gets from him, he gives it to the disciple. It's a exchange. Right? What is he getting from his guru, from his guru, or from what we are getting from Srila Prabhupada? We are getting the teachings. Uh, all of Srila Prabhupada's teachings are in his books. And these books are the basis of this movement. Srila Prabhupada made it very clear to us, emphatically he made it clear to us that his books are the basis. So like whenever we give class, what is the basis? Whenever we speak, what is the basis? Srila Prabhupada's book, Srila Prabhupada's teachings. So that way, Srila uh, Prabhupada is the Shiksha Guru of everyone. And the Shiksha Guru is the principal Guru. Anyway, the point is <coughs> that uh, when you surrender to us, our business is to offer you to Srila Prabhupada, meaning engage you in ISKCON. We are representing ISKCON. And that's why I also ask everyone to take a vow that he'll never leave ISKCON. Why? Because we are give, generally the guru has to take care of the disciples, guide the disciples personally. But the way things are in ISKCON, we are not able to do that. Oftentimes we are giving initiation to candidates where we hardly go. Generally, in the early days, what used to happen? There used to be an ashram. Guru used to have an ashram. And the disciples used to get the training from the Guru 
in that ashram, staying in the ashram. To get trained by a, by a guru, disciple had to stay in the ashram. Now, Iskon is actually Prabhupada's ashram. Iskon is an ashram. And Iskon is Srila Prabhupada's ashram. And Prabhupada kept his position uh, as the Mahant or head of that ashram, as the founder Acharya. No one will ever take that position in ISKCON. Prabhupada will always remain the Acharya of ISKCON. And we all are uh, functioning within that ashram. Some are gurus, some are disciples. And what is the guru's responsibility? The guru's responsibility is to engage and situate the devotees in the ashram of Srila Prabhupada. And when one is properly situated in that ashram in ISKCON, their spiritual life is safe, right? Like although you may not have so much contact with your Diksha Gurus, but being situated in ISKCON, your spiritual life is safe, you make spiritual advancement. Uh, this is the wonderful arrangement of Srila Prabhupada. Therefore, if you want to protect your spiritual life, always remain in ISKCON. In my so many years of experience, I have seen that those who remained in ISKCON, their spiritual life was safe. Those who left ISKCON, no matter how exalted they may have been, their spiritual life was badly affected. So on that understanding, I dare to give initiation, even in the places where I barely go. And as a matter of fact, we hardly have constant contact with disciples as such. Like, so uh, this is on that strength. That's why I uh, make it very clear to everyone that please never ever leave ISKCON. Why do I make that condition? Because if you remain in ISKCON, your spiritual life will sa be safe. And if you leave ISKCON, then I don't have any responsibility. Because we made a condition. Uh, uh, your spiritual life is this is how secured by Srila Prabhupada. And Srila Prabhupada created this institution in such a wonderful way. If you remain in ISKCON, what happens? You are getting, first thing is, Sadhu Sangha. Getting the association of devotees. The association of devotees is the greatest security, greatest safety net. And then in ISKCON, you are coming across so many wonderful devotees. Regularly the Bhagavatam part, Bhagavatam discourses and Bhagavad Gita is going on. Morning Bhagavatam class, evening Bhagavad Gita class. And personally also we request you to read Srila Prabhupada's books. Uh, if you are in ISKCON then you will be compelled to chant 16 rounds. In ISKCON you are regular expected to follow the four regulative principles. These are the vows you'll be taking. It is not that you take the vow now at the time of initiation and then later on you don't follow that. Will that be right thing to do? Hmm? No. You are taking a vow, meaning it's a lifelong commitment. You have to chant 16 rounds every day and follow the four regulative principles. And here again, Prabhupada said, those who chant 16 rounds and follow for a regulative principle, Prabhupada is guaranteeing them that they'll go back to Godhead. He'll make sure that they'll go back to Godhead. What an amazing uh, assurance. And what an easy way to go back to Godhead. <laughs> chant 16 rounds and follow the four regulative principles. 
so <clears throat> please follow huh? please never ever break this vow that you are taking you will be taking the vow in front of the deities in front of the Vaishnavas in front of the sacrificial fire in front of no, you at the time of huh, this initiation the demigods are also witnessing this occasion uh, and so main thing is that in front of the Vaishnavas and in front of Krishna you are taking the vow uh, so make it a point to always follow and always remain in ISKCON and uh, and you have found the most precious object, Krishna Consciousness. You have found the most wonderful uh, institution, most wonderful ashram. This ashram has spread all over the world. Especially those who travel a lot, uh, they can see the benefit of this benefit of this wonderful arrangement that Srila Prabhupada made. Uh, wherever you go, you have your family. Uh, like, and it is expanding. The ashram is growing larger and larger. The number of devotees are increasing. Isn't it wonderful? Like you go to some remote place remote place in the sense unknown place and then you look at uh, the ISKCON uh, address book and you see oh ISKCON is there telephone number is there Prabhu uh, I'm coming <laughs> <laughs> oh please come uh, and it's so wonderful I've seen like uh, often this time of course we are busy with the uh, seminar but devotees whenever they come here this time also it happened devotees who came earlier they got involved in doing things here uh, they came to visit uh, often it happens and we are doing the gardens and lots of things had to do there uh, and devotees came for a visit on the weekends they got engaged in doing the on their own why do they do that? Because they have a feeling that this is my place. This is my place. Uh, ISKCON is my home. Wherever there is ISKCON, uh, there is my family. And all the devotees are my uh, near and dear ones. So this is a wonderful arrangement that Srila Prabhupada has made. And to become a member of this institution is such a wonderful, uh, wonderful opportunity, such a wonderful good fortune. So just to recognize that, that today through this process of initiation, you are becoming a member of this uh, family, officially. You are developing a relationship with Srila Prabhupada, a personality who is, whose greatness is inconceivable. Actually, compared to Srila Prabhupada, not only in the Western world, even in India, uh, many of the exalted personalities become uh, quite uh, overshadowed. Prabhupada's greatness. Uh, at least in the Western concept, in the Western context, we can see that there are great personalities, no doubt. Jesus Christ was undoubtedly a very great personality. Uh, and <coughs> Moses was a very great personality. Muhammad also was quite a great personality. But And they have become so prominent today as spiritual leaders. But when we look at it, what did they give? How much Krishna consciousness they gave? Spiritual religion means giving the understanding of God. They're speaking about God, but how much understanding they're giving? Christianity is saying that love thy father, Lord the God. 
fine, love thy father, but who is the father? No understanding. Islam is even saying, Muhammad is saying, don't think about him. Even to think about him is a blasphemy. Don't think about it. But these are becoming uh, the religions of the world today. When on the other hand, when you come to Srila Prabhupada's teachings, what is Prabhupada's teachings? If you want to know about God, you can come to me. I can tell you what his name is, what he looks like, where he stays, what he does, and I can even give you his telephone number. <laughs> so that you can establish your connection with him. And not only that, he said, Prabhupada is saying that. It is there in his books. The total understanding of the material nature, spiritual nature. The material nature has cons consists of so many universes floating in the causal ocean. Each universe has 14 planetary systems. And beyond this universe, there is causal ocean. Beyond the causal ocean, uh, is spiritual world, uh, the Brahma Jyoti, in Brahma Jyoti there are spiritual planets, Vaikuntha, then you go through higher and higher and higher and the topmost region of the spiritual sky is Golok. Perfect understanding. Uh, so, and who is Krishna? Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And he has two types of expansions. One is Swamsa, what they are his incarnations. Incarnation means Krishna himself. Uh, same person becoming many. That is the Swamsa expansions and Bibhin Namsa expansions, parts and parcels, the jivas. Just like fr from the sun comes out innumerable rays from Krishna comes out the jivas, the tiny parts and parcels. Isn't it complete understanding? Uh, at least the essence is this. We understood that. Prabhupada has given us. And one thing, of course, we have to recognize that when you know something, it is simple. When you don't know, it is complex. Like spiritual science may appear to be very, very complex, but when you get to know it, it becomes easy. When you know it, it's easy. When I was trying to learn French, I was about to give it up. So my teacher told me, why you want to give up? I say, it's very difficult. So she said, no, French is very easy. In France, even children speak French. <laughs> so that's it. Like when you know it, it's simple. Krishna consciousness, spiritual knowledge is very simple. Provided we have the right source and the right teacher. And by Prabhupada's mercy, we have the right source, his books. And we have the teacher. Srila Prabhupada and his representatives. There will be many, many teachers coming after, uh, generation after generation. Our business is not only the business, the institution that comprises of disciples. It's a guru disciple. Today who are disciples, tomorrow they'll become gurus. And their disciples in course of time will become gurus. So this is how the process will go on. The Guru will impart the knowledge because he has it. Upadekshanti te jnanam jnanina tattva darshina tattva darshina tattva drashta jai krishna tattva bitta shai guru hai. But in order to become a good teacher, you have to become a good student. It's only the good student that makes the good teacher. So first you have to become good students and then you become good teacher. Then you'll automatically become good teachers. So always remember this is a process of uh, 
becoming disciples and eventually becoming gurus. And Mahaprabhu is saying, Amar Aggai Guru Haya Taro Eidesh. Don't remain disciples all your life. <laughs> Rather make it a point to become gurus. Everybody may not get the stamp from ISKCON of becoming Diksha Gurus. Doesn't matter. When you are imparting the knowledge, you are playing the role of a guru. Whether you are preaching in your, at home to your children, whether you are preaching to the Bhakti Vrikshas or uh, so forth, you are actually playing the role of a guru. Mm. So this is the movement of gurus. The movement of making gurus. Therefore, when people say that Srila Prabhupada didn't make any, no, but none of Prabhupada's disciples became qualified to become a guru, we can see that they didn't understand the ABCD of Krishna consciousness. If Prabhupada is such a great spiritual personality, and we say Prabhupada was such a great spiritual personality, but he couldn't make a single disciple, single guru. He couldn't. None of, well, he couldn't make a single disciple that who could become qualified to be a guru. That means what? Prabhupada failed in his teachings. Prabhupada's glory is that Prabhupada is making millions of gurus all over the world. And he will be continuing to make billions of gurus all over the world. So that is what's going to happen. So please take this process very seriously. Practice it with all earnestness and you will see what the benefit will be. You know what the benefit will be? Uh, at the time when you are going to leave your body, you will see. The chariot has come to take you to Golok Vrindavan. So the holy name has, uh, holy name is Krishna himself. What you are getting the Hare Krishna Mahamantra is Krishna himself. But if there is offense, then the holy name doesn't become Krishna. And there are ten offenses to the holy name. So I will request Shesha Prabhu to enlighten us on the holy name. <laughs> Om Ajnana Timarandasya Kananjana Shalakaya Chakshuran Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Venama Thank you Bhakti Chiru Swami for that very wonderful invitation into the family of Srila Prabhupada who wouldn't want to dedicate one's life to Guru and his family <clears throat> after hearing such a wonderful description. Thank you. Actually, the description Maharaj gave to us is the culmination of what I was speaking yesterday about your great fortune. Of course, fortune is there in all aspects of our life at all time. But particularly, there are instances, there are ceremonies like this one that make it, uh, in which we celebrate our good fortune. Not only the initiates, but all the devotees attending we all get the benefit of uh, the culmination of the fortune that we've been seeking for millions of lives. Brahmanda, Brahmite, Kona, Bhagavan, Jeev, Guru, Krishna, Pashare, Bhai, Bhakti, Lata, Beach. Traveling in so many universes for so long a period of time, finally, we've come to the point of getting Guru. 
and Guru gives us Krishna. So fortunate we all are. Of course, Maharaj introduced the subject of how to keep that fortune and asked me to speak on that. Maybe I'll just speak on the first, first offense to the holy name of the Lord, which, if we examine it closely, we can understand that it's the root of all the offenses. Of course, inattentive chanting is the root of all the offenses, but let's take a look at the first offense to the holy name of the Lord. The blasphemed devotees who have dedicated their lives to propagating the holy name of the Lord. Such a wonderful thing, propagating the holy name of the Lord, but blaspheming them? Why? So ungrateful, so misguided that someone giving something so valuable and rare, making people fortunate, and that person you going to criticize? Very unfortunate. Mars gave the example of bad association Rukmi. His sister was a <laughs> goddess of fortune. But due to bad association and this criticism, exposing himself to criticism of Krishna, he became such a uh, rascal fellow. I was also speaking the other day about Ramachandra Puri. Now Ramachandra Puri, we, we spoke the instance of him criticizing his own guru. But how did he get to that state of criticizing his own guru? Well, it's described in Chaitanya Charitamrita that when he visited Puri, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was there, he had, he had access to the family Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, disciple of Ishwar Puri, Ishwar Puri, godbrother of Ramachandra Puri, disciples of Madhavinda Puri, they also had their family, as Maharaj is describing. So it was easy for him to gain the association of all those Vaishnavas uh, in the line of Madhavinda Puri. He had access to visit Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself and the other Vaishnavas there in Puri. But what was his practice? What was his practice there? How did he take advantage? Marj has given us a very nice picture of what we can take advantage of to uh, get out of this material world and what's waiting for us? That chariot. That chariot is waiting for us at the end. So he's given us a picture how to take advantage of spiritual association. But what did Ramachandra Puri do how did he take advantage of that spiritual association? Well, he would do things like you or I might do. Invite some Vaishnava, please come and take Prashad. And then he would serve them. Please take more. No, 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 take more. More. Babu. I'm satisfied completely. No more. No, 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 please take more. Take more. Have some sweets. Also, have sweets. He would do like that. But then, he would criticize. Just see <laughs> how these followers of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu eat too much. <laughs> Even the Lord himself he criticized, oh, look, there's ants in your place. That must mean you're eating sweets at night. In secret, you're eating something. So in this way, he would criticize the Vaishnavas, blaspheme those devotees who have dedicated their lives to propagating the holy name of the Lord. 
If there's one thing that I would add to the vows that you'll take before His Holiness Bhakti Chur Swami this morning, is that never criticize the Vaishnavas. Criticism of the Vaishnavas, this is there in the first offense to the holy name of the Lord. But as I said, if you look at all the other offenses, you can find this element of not appreciating the good fortune that you're getting that's being received by the holy name of the Lord, being received in the association of Vaishnavas. Blaspheming those devotees, criticizing devotees can spoil the association. Can spoil your spiritual life. Destroy your relationships with those who are your true well-wishers. So please, please, please don't criticize devotees. One bad thing about this world of advancement and using everything in Christian services, Marge has been talking about throughout the retreat, is that we have things like the internet. Now that can be a very deadly place for Vaishnava aparad, criticism of devotees. It's easy to do. I remember one manager in the BBT years ago when I was working the BBT in Los Angeles. He was a little hot-headed as managers sometimes are and when he got upset he would write a letter by hand. There was no email in those days. He'd write a letter and he'd put it on his desk because to mail it you have to go someplace. You have to go to the post box, go to the post office. But he put it there, he didn't do anything with it because he thought, well, I'll cool down before getting angry and giving, sending some angry message and, and I won't do it. I'll, I'll cool off. It gives a cooling off period. Actually, in law, there's cool off period, even with murder. If you cool off, you get reduced to manslaughter. <laughs> so, there's no cooling off period these days. Just get on a computer, type, one second, it's gone, blaspheming. And that can last lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. It's one second urge to blaspheme, to critis criticize using modern technology. So please, 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 don't commit this first offense against the holy name of the Lord. It can spoil everything, uh, all the fortune that's been building for many, many lifetimes to come to this position. So I would just ask that of all the initiates and the devotees here today. And also ask it of myself that I don't fall victim to that fault. Hare Krishna. So, did it sink in into your, first into your brain and then into your heart? Yes? What did you learn? Okay, yes, Gita, you are saying something. Never ever criticize the Vaishnavas. Don't commit the first offense. Uh, that is called Hati Mata Aparad. That's the most dangerous offense. If a mad elephant enters into a beautiful garden, what happens? The garden is destroyed. So you are trying to create a beautiful garden with your Krishna consciousness. But that one offense can destroy everything. Thank you so much, Shri Prabhu, for enlightening us so wonderfully. Okay, now we'll go one by one and you tell us the 
one offense after another. So ma me kam sharanang braja. After speaking about all 18 chapters, Krishna is coming to the point. Surrender unto me. Surrender. But in the material nature, what is happening? We are saying, no surrender. No surrender means false ego. Mm. I am mm, the enjoyer. I am the proprietor. Mm. And mm, I there is no need for me to surrender to anyone. Doesn't that what false ego says? You are the greatest. Uh, and as a result of that, what happens? We suffer in this material nature. We are suffering in this material nature so much. Do you want to suffer? Does anybody want to suffer? Naturally not. So that's why uh, the way out of that suffering condition is surrender. In that respect we can recall uh, one very simple thing. When you are young, when you are little, did you have any anxiety? Why not? Huh? Because the parents were there. You knew that they are taking care of me. Right? <clears throat> but when you grew up, the trouble started. So when you grow up, uh, we have to take care of ourselves. We can't depend. We became independent. And along with our independence came all kinds of anxieties. Now, won't it, be, won't it be wonderful to surrender to somebody who can take care of us in all respects? So that's what Krishna consciousness is providing us. Surrender to the most powerful, most opulent uh, and most wonderful personality. Who is that personality? Krishna. Can you just try to imagine if, you're, if you have a friend who has a lot of wealth and that friend gives you the assurance look whenever you are in distress you can come to me will you have any anxiety you know that the friend is there I can always go to him and he'll t he will give me now if we, and Krishna is that friend and he is giving us that assurance mm -hmm. The Suridam Sarva Bhutanam. I am the dear most friend of everybody, all of you. Now should you think, Krishna is say, telling this to others, not to me. Should you think that way? Or should you rather think the other way around? Krishna is telling me, I am your dear most friend. And uh, Sarva Loko Maheshwaram. Krishna owns everything. Everything belongs to Him. So when we have a friend like that, why should we worry? Only thing we have to do is just surrender. Krishna, I am yours. Please do whatever you want to do with me. And if I ever in difficulty, I'll tell you, Krishna, please take care of me. Take care of this situation. Yes, Krishna, fine. Krishna is saying, fine. If you have any difficulty, come to me. And I will take care of you. So Krishna has given that assurance. So why should you worry? And why shouldn't we surrender unto Krishna and become free from all these unnecessary anxieties? So this is how wonderful this process is that Srila Prabhupada has offered us. A life without any anxiety, a life without any fear, uh, a life win of uh, inconceivable enjoyment. That is what Krishna consciousness is. 
Are you enjoying or suffering ever since you took to Krishna consciousness? Enjoying. Is anyone suffering? Those who have accepted Krishna consciousness? No one. So at least I can say that whatever I am saying is true. Correct. So please huh, take to this process with all earnestness. So now, <clears throat> one after another, you can come and get your new name, new bead, uh, and a new life. Yeah, this is also very important. You are actually getting your new birth. The Vedas are saying that. From mother and father, you, your body was born. And from the Vedas and spiritual master, your soul is going to be, uh, your soul is not going to be born, but your soul is going to resurrect. Uh, it is going to rise again. As Bhaktivinoda Thakur, I was quoting uh, the other day, should the soul confined for former wrongs should try to rise again. Okay, now let's go back to that also. The birth that we got from father and mother is not important. <laughs> the flesh is not our own, alas. This body made of flesh and bone is not our bodies. Uh, it's not our body. It's only a dress. It's, it's not me, it's just a dress. The flesh is not our own, alas. The mortal frame a chain. This body is actually a chain with which we are bound to this material nature. The mortal frame, it's mortal, is going to die someday. The mortal frame a chain. The soul confined for former wrongs. What is the former wrongs? We have rejected Krishna. We have rejected Krishna. That is our wrong. We have become envious of Krishna. Uh, that is our wrong. That's the mistake we made. This, and that is why we got in, entrapped, imprisoned in this material nature. The soul confined for former wrongs should try to rise again. So, resurrect, rise again. All right? It's already happening. You all ch started chanting, it's already happening. And as I said, like, uh, previously mantra could be achieved from the Guru through the process of initiation, but in ISKCON, to qualify for initiation, you have to chant Hare Krishna 16 rounds for one year. Okay, so uh, let us have, yes, okay, uh, Achaman. Achaman means cleansing your vocal channel. Okay, so you got Achaman for me also. <coughs> so, <coughs> Achaman, the word Achaman actually simply means cleansing your mouth. Like you do achaman. Huh? After eating food, when you wash your mouth, that is also achaman. Huh? But this is a special achaman by chanting mantra. So you take, you first wash your hands, right hand, and also wash your left hand also with the water. Then take some water on your palm and drink it from the base of your palm saying Om Shri Keshavaya Namaha. And then wash your hands again and then take water and drink that water saying Om Shri Narayanaya Namaha. Then wash your hands again, then take water 
and drink it by saying Om Shri Madhavaya Namaha. So everyone has done that. <clears throat> now fold your hands and say after me. Om Apavitra Pavitrova Sarvavasthan Gato Piva Yasmaret Pundarikakshang Sa Baiha Abhantaraha Shuchihi Shri Vishnu Shri Vishnu Shri Vishnu Om Apavitra Pavitrova Whether one is pure or impure Apavitra means impure Pavitra means pure Whether one is impure or pure Sarvavasthang gato piva In whatever condition he may have gone through How sinful one may have been How contaminated one may have been Just maret One who remembers Pundarik akshang Pundarik means a lotus And akshang means eyes So who is the person whose eyes are like lotus flowers? Shri Krishna So that is another name of Krishna Pundarikaksha Yasmaret One who remembers him Sa He Baiha Means externally And Abhantaraha Means internally Shuchihi Becomes purified Therefore Always remember Krishna And never forget him So what is the best way of getting purified? Just by remembering Krishna. If you remember Krishna, you will become purified both externally and internally. So this is the custom <coughs> of getting purified or doing achaman uh, before taking a vow. If you don't do the achaman, then the process of chanting mantra or vow we may not be complete. Okay, I'll shortly tell you. I'll tell you one story. Uh, Baman Dev came to Bali Maharaj. Bali Maharaj was famous for his charity. So he performed his jagya. So he is giving in charity, whatever one wanted. So this Baman Dev came, a little boy. He came to him. What do you want? I want just three steps of land. A land, uh, size of three steps. Land, size of three steps. Bamandev was, Bali Maharaj was so impressed with Bamandev that when he saw him, he felt, to this person I can give everything. Uh, can give everything. But he was surprised when he said, I only want three steps of land. So he said, you came to Bali and you are asking for only three steps of land. He said, yes. He said, ask for something that is worth its while. I can give you my whole kingdom. I can give you everything that you want. No, no, no. I want only three steps of land. Because what's the point in getting any more? Any? Because when you lie down, all you need is three steps of land. <laughs> So that's the size of your body. <laughs> so Sukracharya felt something is wrong. <laughs> something is wrong. <laughs> and he suspected and he told that to Bali Maharaj also, whispered it. S looks like it's Vishnu. <laughs> he came to take everything away from you. Bali Maharaj said, Vishnu came to take everything away from me. That's the greatest good fortune. So Krasarya said, is this what I told you? Is this what I taught you all this while? <laughs> what kind of disciple you are? 
But Bali Maharaj was adamant, no. I will grant him whatever he wanted. So Sukracharya was so <clears throat> upset and Bali Maharaj was about before granting, okay fine, I'll give you three steps of land that you wanted. But he had to do Achaman. <clears throat> so Sukracharya wouldn't let him do the Achaman. You know what he did? He entered into the water pot. The water pot has a neck. Huh? So he got, he stuck the neck of the water pot. So that water would come out. And he won't be able to do Achaman. Therefore he won't be able to uh, commit himself. So Bali Maharaj, uh, Bamandev saw that water is not coming out. So he said, okay, it looks like something got stuck, Bali Maharaj. So he took a kusha grass. Okay, I'll clear it. <laughs> and <laughs> poked it with kusha grass. And as a result of that, uh, Sukracharya got blinded by one eye. And screaming he came out of the <laughs> Kamandalu water pot. So that's the importance of taking Achaman. So now become very serious about taking your vows. Alright? Thank you, Hare Krishna. Yeah, he's an artist, he's an animator, 2D animators. And John is stuck with one assignment and I've been hearing that he is finishing it for the last six months. The, his idea is that when he finishes that, he is going to move in here. <laughs> and his plan actually was that he would come now and he would move in, but uh, he is it will take him another two months, two months or longer? Roughly two months. That means it can take longer also, <laughs> right? Okay. So finish it quickly and come over. <laughs> and uh, you sure you don't want to get married? Yeah? Very good. That's what Prabhupada told me also. <laughs> So, what are the four regulative principles? No meat eating, no intoxication, no illicit sex, and no gambling. So you take a vow to follow these four principles. Do you remember what Shesha Prabhu asked you also to make a um, promise, vow, take a vow? To not uh, criticize any devotees. Yeah, very good. And from my side also, you have to take another vow. Never ever leave ISKCON. Yes, I promise never to leave ISKCON. Never leave. Say it loudly, I can't hear you. <laughs> I will never leave ISKCON. Wonderful. <laughs> so on behalf of Srila Prabhupada, I'm giving you the name Jagannath Chandra Das. So Amit is from Atlanta. Oh, I forgot to mention Jagannath Chandra is from Philadelphia. And Amit is from Atlanta. And uh, you are working as an IT? Yes, as a technical manager Tec in at and AT&T AT technical manager, Baba. You are managing AT&T. <laughs> 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 Thank you. So... <clears throat> What are the four regulative principles? So, <clears throat> no meat eating, no illicit sex, no gambling, and no intoxication. Yes, yeah, so you take a vow to follow these four principles. Uh, yes, Gurudev, in front of uh, Gornitai, yeah, uh, Nursing Bhagwan, Panchtat, Guru Parampara, <laughs> Srila Prabhupada, and exalted devotees, Hisha Prabhu, and all the exalted Vaishnavas here. I take this vow that I will never. Uh, violate any four regulatory. I'll follow all the four regulatory principles. Very good. I'm very impressed. Yeah. 
And Shesha Prabhu asked you to also take a vow. Yes, I will never criticize any Vaishnava. Wonderful. And uh, will you ever I'll, leave Iskon? I'll, I'll, I'll never. I never leave your lotus feet, so I'll always be… No, no, that's not what I asked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will never leave Iskon. I yeah. promise. Never ever leave Iskon. Always remain at the lotus feet of Srila Prabhupada. Because Iskon is Srila Prabhupada's lotus feet. So always remain at Srila Prabhupada's lotus feet. So on behalf of Srila Prabhupada, I'm giving you the name Aprameya Krishna Das. Aprameya Krishna Prabhu ki. Aprameya means one who cannot be described or defined or proven. Krishna is beyond all that. So you are becoming his servant. And Jagannath Chandra, you got the meaning of the name. You are the ser- becoming the servant of the Moonlike Jagannath Dev. So, Gita is from Calcutta. Now she is in Detroit. She is married to uh, Advaita Pran Prabhu. Yeah, there you are. Uh, so, Gita, I know her from when she was a little child. And uh, her parents are also initiated. And uh, she's from Calcutta, but she's actually a uh, Calcuttan Sindhi. <laughs> and Sindhis make very good devotees. Like Gita is going to be another example of a very good Sindhi devotee. <laughs> are they, uh, uh, you also Sindhi? Oh, okay, okay. That makes a very good team. <laughs> North and South. <laughs> so, what are the four regulative principles? Guru Maharaj, the four regulative principles are no meat eating, no intoxication, no gambling, and no illicit sex. Very good. And <clears throat> also, uh, what Shesha Prabhu suggested? Shesha Prabhu suggested to never ever criticize a Vaishnava. Very good. Because that com- comprises the first offense, uh, which is the most dangerous of all offenses to the Holy Name. And uh, taking a vow to follow the four regulative principles and uh, also not to criticize the Vaishnavas. And also I'll request you to take a vow of never ever leave Iskand. I will never, ever, ever, ever leave this country. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> so, on behalf of Srila Prabhupada, I am giving you the name Golokeshwari Dasi. Golokeshwari Mataji ki. So, who is the Golokeshwari? The Ishwari of Golok? Srimati Radharani, so you're becoming her maid servant. <laughs> Hare Krishna. So, <clears throat> what are the four regulative principles? I will not indulge in eating meat, fish, egg, or any sort of non veg. Okay, very good. And uh, I will not indul- indulge in gambling, I will not indulge in uh, intoxication. And I will not indulge in illicit sex. And uh, as Shesha Prabhu suggested, never ever criticize a Vaishnava. Mm. Uh Right. Right? And also, never ever leave Iskon. Also, never, never? Leave Iskon. Uh Iskon chhod ke kabhi nahi jana hai. Kabhi nahi jana ka matlab, ye dehant ke baad bhi, uha par Iskon hai. <laughs> Bhagavad Dham mein bhi Prabhupada ji hai aur Prabhupada ke saath Iskon bhi hai to har samay ke liye Iskon mein hi rehna aur apne bacche ko bhi Iskon mein rakhna to so on behalf of Srila Prabhupada I am giving you the name <clears throat> 
राम मुरारी दास राम इज हियर राम इज बालाराम और मुरारी इज कृष्ण सो कृष्ण बालाराम दास Oh, I took it for granted. <laughs> yeah, did they ask? Did they ask? Okay. Or how much? How many mala japna hai? So I'm thinking about it. Yeah. Hare Krishna, Mara. Hare Krishna. So, four niyams. What are they? वैष्णव अपराध कभी करूंगे नहीं बहुत अच्छा पहले आ गए नो मांस मच्छी किसी की निंदा नहीं करूंगी एंड नशा तो कभी नहीं किए है ना नो नशा मांस मछली नशा नो नहीं बहुत अच्छा और नो जुआ भी नहीं कभी खेले हैं शायद तो जब कभी नहीं खेले हैं बाद में भी खेलने का सवाल नहीं और अवैध संग भी नहीं करना वो भी तो और नो जस्ट मेंट और कभी भी इसको छोड़ के नहीं जाना नहीं। और हर रोज कितनी माला जपेंगे सोलह माला सोलह माला बहुत अच्छा ऐसे मैं बीस करती हूँ माला वेरी गुड बीस मणि है अच्छा तो पिछले सात आठ साल से बीस माला बीस माला अंगले में बीस कड़ है तो बस नहीं ओ साक्षी माला में बीस है ओ मैं सोचा हाथ में भी बीस है बहुत अच्छा सो सोलह माला बीस माला हाँ ठीक है कम से कम सोलह माला हाँ हर रोज अपना थैंक यू महाराज सो प्रभुपाद के और से मैं आपको नाम दे रहा हूँ उर्मिला प्रयशी दासी राम मुरारी प्रभु की उर्मिला प्रयशी माताजी की हरे कृष्णा सर राम मुरारी एंड उर्मिला प्रेयशी आर द पेरेंट्स ऑफ या आई नो सर विकास कृष्णा यू टेक केयर ऑफ देम नाइसली Shesha Prabhu is asking for your blessings. <laughs> yeah, I've been reminded, but actually I took it for granted. I should have. And John, how many rounds you'll chant every day? 16 minimum. Minimum. I'm sorry, sorry. Jagannath, uh, Priya, Chandra, and uh, Aprameya, Krishna. At least 16 rounds. Next is uh, Nilanjana Dutta. So, <clears throat> what are the four regulative principles? No meat eating, no intoxication, no gambling, no illicit sex. Okay, so you take a vow to follow these four principles? Yes, I uh, do. And how many ra And yes. as Shesha Prabhu said? No criticism no. for Vaishnavas. Our Vaishnavas, very Respect good. Respect them. And will you ever leave his con? No. Okay. Never. No else, nowhere. Nowhere. To go. Nowhere to go. Nowhere to go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, and how many rounds of Hare Krishna Mahavans will chant every day? Sixteen rounds. Sixteen rounds. Okay, very good. So, on behalf of Srila Prabhupada, I am giving you the name Ratna Garbha Devi Dasi.
Ratnagarbha means indicates the one who gave birth to gems like jewel like personalities so that is uh, that is mother jashoda mother devaki mother kirtida so you are becoming their maid servant ratnagarbha mata ji ki What are the four regulative principles? No meat eating. <coughs> no meat eating. No gambling. No intoxication. No illicit sex. And you take a vow to follow. You take a vow to follow these four principles. Yes. And what are the other two vows you'll take at the same time? Never criticize Vaishnavas. And, and never ever leave Iskand. Never ever leave Iskand. Very good. And how many rounds of Hare Krishna Mahamantra will chant? At least sixteen rounds. At least sixteen rounds. Very good. Mm-hmm. On behalf of Srila Prabhupada, I am giving you the name Nilambari Radha Dasi. <laughs> Radharani wears blue sari. So Nilambari, uh, one who is dressed in blue. That Radharan is maid servant. Okay? Become a very good devotee. Okay, so I looked at this side, I forgot to look at this side. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for volunteering. <laughs> and confirming my confidence. Ah. Thank you all very much. Mm. So, uh, Raghunath Prabhu has come from Alachua to perform the fire sacrifice. Mano Bistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Swaha 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 Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yudha Padakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunatan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadhvetam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakan Vitamscha Swaha 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 Swaha